is Jackie, your host of Jackson Rose, a podcast all about the makers and their makes. This episode will feature the twig sweater by Junko Okamoto and the snow crocus. And I am, I'm just so excited. I'm going to jump right in with a poem by John O'Donohue for you. Okay, thought work. Of course, from the frail music sought by words and the path that always claims the journey in the pursuit of a more oblique rhythm, creating mostly its own geography. The mind is an old crow who knows only to gather dead twigs, then take them back to the vacancy between the branches of the parent tree and entwine them around the emptiness with silence and unfailing patience until what was fallen, withered and lost, is now set to fill with dreams as a nest. I love that poem so much, and I thought that would be a good one to introduce the twigs, um, which is a beautiful sweater by Junko Okamoto. And um, I guess, I think I started it right around the new year and I really wanted to take on something that was more of a challenge. And the surprising thing was what a challenge it was to knit because it didn't feel extravagant on my needles. But in the end, it is extravagant and I had patience. It is definitely something that I can fill with dreams. As I knit it, I had to have faith in those dreams. I guess what I'll say about the color choices is that I was very intentional to include colors to make the knit more wearable and it proves to be incredibly wearable. I might put extra footage in here but oddly enough I'm just very used to being delighted with knitting in my hands and just by itself and the shift for me is having the knitting be part of my worn experience of being me in the world. And this one satisfies that criteria very well. I'm just going to say something very practical about it. Because I added black, uh, that takes, that means anything black on the bottom suits this just fine. Because I added the burgundy, I'm able to pop it with like burgundy pieces, which again, gives this th this piece more versatility. It's not just a beautiful piece by itself. It integrates so beautifully with all sorts of things. I will just say, then the funny thing about the color choice is the shoe is birdie, and that's clearly uh, my hair. And then the base is um, Isair Alpaca 2, which is a wool, 50 wool, 50 mohair. And um, I kind of my eyes but I added as I was going it's a three color knit and I intentionally added three more colors just to again it wasn't actually for the sweater itself it was actually for my life which is a strange way to look at it um some other mods I did just to make it fit me better you know I had chosen this sweater years ago. I, I think I even purchased yarn that the sweater was knit in, but I couldn't get gauge. I think I was down to triple zeros trying to get gauge on that yarn. And um, the ECR alpaca too, and clearly the birdie, I was able, I don't know, I actually don't know if I got gauge or not, but I was able to make a fabric on size two needles that I liked and that felt like it would be reasonable for a sweater and not too big and not too small, etc. Um, and so it was kind of the switch to ECR2 that was in my that was in my stash. I had bought I had planned to make the twigs and originally I planned to have this peachy stone color be the main color and then the accents be the gray and black. And I, again, I lit, I thought to myself, what's more wearable? And I thought this color, I, I know that seems so 
boring to say what's more wearable. But if I want to, as I've been saying, you know, about the poem, I don't want the poem to just be the sweater itself. I want it to be on me in my life. And if this main color helps it be on me in my life more, then that's fantastic. Um, what did I make? A few years back, I made Fox Thoughts by Hiroko Payne and it, and in that I had decided to extravagantly decrease before the ripping. I think I got that idea from doing the Cavalcante and I knew that that was a possibility and that doesn't really change. And you can see that I did, I extravagantly decreased because I didn't want this to go out like an A-line. But otherwise there were no mods from here to here, except I think I shortened this ribbing a bit. But and that was just, again, it was funny because somebody asked me about my measurements, which I completely understand, but the even more important than the ruler is your body. That's your measurement. So put your things on, decide where they're hitting you on your body not like Jackie's sweater is this long and therefore mine should be, you know, although I understand why it's good to have, like we all want measurements and frames of reference, but the ultimate measure is you, you the maker. And then the other big mod I suppose I did was of the sleeves. So I'll pop a picture in here of what the sleeves um, actually look like, but this motif is here, they're much bigger, they decrease into a little narrow cuff. And um, for me, I don't, that shape is not one that I prefer. I find it harder to wear and, and it kind of like just keeps this broadness and you know, the, if it's going to be a broad body, then I'm gonna have a, be a narrow sleeve. And so I didn't put motifs in here and that was to, make this narrower through here because it's so wide and then I picked up the motif what's really funny is that I when I knit this sweater this was down to my wrists and um and then I was blocking it and I got impatient and I stuck it in the dryer I mean it wasn't wet it was just like the morning after damp but somehow just doing that these sleeves got so much shorter and they're fine. They're not what I intended. And I may go back and redo them, but I may not. I don't know. But I took the motif from up here and I put it down because without it, it sort of would disappear into a blondness. But I thought this was just what it needed to kind of have a dynamic right around there. And as I said, it's a joy to wear and it's literally designed for my coloring and me. It's like not designed for being a fabulous picture on Instagram. I don't even know, but it was fun in that like my mother happened to be making a quilt at the same time that was um, glorious. Like the, the whole, and this speaks to the Rick Rubin piece and the creative rap act, which I've been reading. And I want to read you another section of in the podcast um, of kind of, I would say, emptying yourself, emptying yourself and being and just being in a flow state of noticing, absorbing, seeing what you're attracted to. And and he'll call it the source you can call it whatever you want. But if my mother and I live together and we're both practicing that, I guess it doesn't surprise me so much that we often come up with unplanned, such similar colors because um, we're in the same environment. We're in, we're both physically and I would say energetically and spiritually, we're in this environment together. So I wanted to put her quilt up to show that. I also wanted to say, I have done a video in the past for the Soho Squares about how to use Instagram to take your palette and draw. And I did literally take a photo of myself and then 
use Instagram stories to draw the sleeves on as I wanted to imagine how long I wanted the sleeves, etc. And I might pop that in the show notes again because I so often use the coloring feature of Instagram to help me in process while I'm designing like designing on the needles on the go. I think that's my favorite kind of designing is just being, you know, not necessarily just starting from scratch. And I don't even know if that even exists really, but to um, be in a conversation with your knit and be open and responsive and recognize that where you start and what you thought when you start may not be the same at the end. I knit this in New York, like a vast part of it in New York with Debbie Corp. And she's also knitting a twig sweater. And it was such a joy. You know, we just knit and knit and knit together. Um, right in that time of year where winter and spring are meeting. And so this was a perfect way to just... Um, witness that time and know that that time can be a struggle and that something beautiful will come out in the end from it. So I really, really, really enjoyed using, hers was in uh, a verb for keeping warm, all these indigos. It's incredibly beautiful and it was so interesting because it's so dubby. I mean, it, it's it's glorious. I can't wait for you to see that one. And um, I felt pretty insecure about mine um, because here's why it does. It's not like a fantasy knit that takes me away from myself. It's just so solidly plants it in myself. So it's. Um, it's accentuating me and I have to be comfortable with me. It doesn't go, again, it doesn't go, hello. Um, it's not a bill, it, I mean, it's, 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 as amazing as it is, I don't feel like it reads as a billboard. I do feel like it's a lot of work and everything like that, but I don't feel like it's really loud and I appreciate that about it. I feel like there's a subtlety to it that I really enjoy and I think that'll make it very easy to wear um, forever, you know? So I'm very excited and very thrilled about it. I guess that main thing of having to have faith the whole time that the finished, it was not only as I did, I've talked about it, you know, I've if you, have been here before. I talked about it on Instagram. I've talked about it in other videos. You know, the pattern unfolds, the proportions unfold. So even as I knit, I was, you know, wasn't like this part doesn't seem very interesting when you're knitting. It doesn't seem nearly as beautiful as these motifs. And you think, oh, you know, mine isn't as nice as other people's or I don't know, whatever you want to think. And then this motif comes in and it's so beautiful. But then the next layer of finishing it isn't like, oh, the motifs, it's, oh, what am I gonna wear it? How am I gonna wear it? And I just have to say, it has totally thrilled me in that way. It has been so wearable. But this is the Twig Sweater by Junko Okamoto. And I put my sleeve mods over on Patreon, on a post on Patreon. I'm just keeping like all of this stuff in one place there, but you're welcome to head over there and take a look at them. And that's it. Twigs. So I want to talk about this book again and just read you a little section on cultivated in this sense of just openness and being receptive as you're to the world around you. So this is the chapter called the vessel and the filter. And it's Rick Rubin, again, the creative act. He says, to navigate our way through this immense world of data, we learn early in life to focus on information that appears essential or of particular interest and to tune out the rest. As artists, we seek to restore our childlike perception 
a more innocent state of wonder and appreciation, not tethered to utility or survival. Our filter inevitably reduces source intelligence by interpreting the data that arrives instead of letting it pass freely. As the vessel fills with these recast fragments, relationships are created with the material already collected. These relationships produce beliefs and stories. They may be about who we are, the people around us, and the nature of the world we live in. Eventually, these stories coalesce into a worldview. As artists, we want to hold these stories softly and find space for the vast amount of information that doesn't fit easily within the limits of our belief system. The more raw data we can take in and the less we shape it, the closer we get to nature. One can think of the creative act as taking the sum of our vessel's contents as potential material, selecting for elements that seem useful or significant in the moment and representing them. This is source drawn through us and made into books, movies, buildings, paintings, meals, businesses, sweaters, whatever projects we embark on. If we choose to share what we make, our work can recirculate and become source materials for others. Source makes available, the filter distills, the vessel receives, and often this happens beyond our control. It is helpful to know this default system can be bypassed. With training, we can improve our interface with source and radically expand the vessel's ability to receive. Changing the instrument is not always the easiest way to change the sound of the music, but it can make, it can be the most powerful. No matter what tools you use to create, the true instrument is you, and through you, the universe that surrounds us all comes into focus. And he goes on to say, that was a lot to read, but living life as an artist is a practice. You are either engaging in the practice or you're not. It makes no sense to say you're not good at it. It's like saying, I'm not good at being a monk. You're either living as a monk or you're not. We tend to think of the artist's work as the output. The real work of the artist is a way of being in the world. The real work of the artist is a way of being in the world. I just want to juxtapose that next to knitting. And I think we, I'm just as, I'm just as susceptible of this as the next person think it's um, these things, these objects, but we're the work. And so one of the things, I, one of the practical things I want to suggest today is again, I want to suggest that you soften, or if you're somebody who has a cue, that you soften around it. Because what I notice is a lot of knitters have lists of things they want to make and lists of stash and, and that can really bind them so that they're just on an assembly line of production and they're not in that place of just being open to the knit as it unfolds because it's already been imagined com completion. There aren't detours, there aren't meanderings in the knit. And those detours, mistakes, meanderings, repetitions are what make your knitting practice come alive. It's what, you know, it's what gives me so much joy and it is an element of uncertainty and receptivity. So for instance, this snow crocus is my second one. I mean, my first one here, you know, this is my first one that I started this podcast with. Uh, this is by Hidori, Hidori Heroes. And um, it's an incredible pattern. I knit it in um, Elm. Both of these are knit with Diamond Lane Birdie. And then this one's held with Sugar Held Double. And this one's held with Elmer. Um, Elmer is one of my favorite yarns in the whole world. So it was such a joy to knit this. And I modified the sweater because it's the second time I knit it to have this cropped silhouette. I found it way more flattering on me. I carried on with the same modification for, of the sleeves from the original to this one because I loved that. I love her, her decreases are so elegant. 
I did exactly those decreases just now further down. And then I modified the neckline to have the folded over neckline. This one was knit on, um, the pattern says knit on worsted on tens. This was knit on nines. This was knit on eights rather, and this was knit on a nine. I, just so you know that I'm human, I accident or whatever. I mean, you know that, but I'm just saying. The sleeves are knit on two different size needles because I just made a mistake and I got to the end and I was like, I'm not redoing those sleeves. So one of them is slightly smaller than the other. Oh, well. And the only other thing I added is I really like the short front, but I just, oh, did I put this on backwards? I did, I put it on the dress form backwards. Hold on, sorry about that. There she is. Um, I like the short front. And right here, I like this high waist. And I also don't like it to gap in the back right up here. And you can see how it is. It's funny, the shadow, the, this is where I fold. So it gets this little line, but it's not perfect. But those are short rows in there. So that this, this front right here and this back right here are parallel to the ground. I can see, ideally, I probably should have taken my short row and made them a little deeper because that's not particularly a nice curve. Um, I think I did them four, I did two sets, four stitches apart, like four past and four before the side mark, but it looks to me like eight might have been better. But this thing, the fabric on here is amazing. I absolutely adore it. I adore, I adore teaching the class. March 30th, we're having our, you know, on Patreon, we're having our final Zoom. And you know what I really loved is just encouraging everyone, obviously, to knit at their own pace and no race. So, I mean, all of the um, video material is there forever. So you could start at any time. So you, and you can come to the Zoom, just, I think one of the things that's really, I know one of the things that's really wonderful is, um, again, what's important here? These inanimate objects, yes, they're fun and everything, but it's the knitters. So at the Zoom to see the knitters, what colors they chose, what mods they chose, what shapes they chose, what size they chose. Do they want it fitted? Do they want it oversized? How are they wearing it? How do they feel about what they learned? How are, are they excited about their knitting practice? You know, did it bring them to life knitting this? That's the thing that's so fun to see. So I love that. And to that end, I have some exciting news is that um, I'm going to be going to Bainbridge in Washington, the Lamb and Kids store. And I'm going to bring the snow crocuses and I'm going to talk about fabric and substituting yarns. I'm going to have to give that talk on Saturday. And that'd be for, you know, anybody who wants to stop by and say hello and feel these in person. But you know, you could very easily, I know somebody in my Zoom is doing the snow crocus just on Big Birdie. Somebody else is doing it with Birdie and Trio. Um, you could certainly do it in Todd Worsted and get that same fluffy feeling. So it's fun to recognize that you can substitute yarns and feel these fabrics and swatch and make those choices. That was a big part of this class and something kind of fun about having two of these sweaters. And then the second day on Sunday, and there will be kits available and in, I'm, assume, I'm assuming a dyed to order. So if you want these exact sweaters, that April weekend would be the time that they'll be dyed up, ready to go. Friday, April 12th is, I think, generally when they, you know, online do the things for people around to buy yarn. Um, this is gloaming. This is shoe and cookie. Sunday, I'm going to teach the snow crocus. So just that intro part, this this back section, the short rows and the cables is, uh, you know, we can just do that together. 
So that will be fun if you want to take uh, the class with me in person on Sunday afternoon. I'll be in Washington to do that. And then you can just take the video content home to finish it up on your own. But it's fun to get started. And, um, and of course, you're welcome to join the Patreon anytime. Look at these colors together though. Kind of loving all of my knits these days. Um, I did start a wink with the leftover yarns from these because I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful just to, I have this gray coat and just a little wink seems perfect in these colorways. Before I leave you, I wanna talk about something else that's really exciting and that is the the whip that I'm working on right now. Let me go grab that. This is Amy Palco's The Gibber Cowl, and it is a tartan that she has designed, and it is so incredibly wonderful. It's, I believe she, the intention is that it's a three skein of fingering weight yarn project, and she's going to be releasing the pattern this weekend. There's a yarn festival in Edinburgh this weekend where this will be released. And she knitted in Scottish yarn. I think, I believe it was called the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase is where she's going. And I met the lovely ladies at um, Rhinebeck who provided Amy with the yarn support. And it, it's incredible yarn. I've seen it and touched it and felt it. It's so magnificent and wooly and good. So if you can get your hands on that, fantastic. I was not able to get my hands on that in time, so I've, I have Elmer, but I love Elmer with all my heart, so I'm not sad about it. So how the, how the cowl works is it'll have one twist in it, but these three colors will just change. So you'll have three sections. I'm sure you've probably seen it. So there'll be, you know, the raspberry beret will be the background color and the bombshell blue will be the background color and i think this is called commodore is the background color these are all knit in elmer um but one of the things that's truly exciting about this piece for me is that i am going to scotland um, to visit amy i will be going in april and i will be going to the woolly good gathering festival with her and I'll be um, meeting friends there as well so I'm thrilled about that so I of course want to knit all the Scottish things uh, in preparation for that and this is one of them that I'm thrilled to be knitting. I don't know that I will um, get this done by Saturday, but who knows, I'll, I'll try. Um, but I wanted to show it to you nonetheless because it's an absolutely beautiful pattern. I will pop in a little video. I think I made a little B-roll about how I do color. I was asked when I was in a coffee shop working on this, how I keep my uh, color work, strand of color work from bunching. And I guess I have two things to say on that. First of all, you might notice I have the contrast color in my left hand or underneath. That helps make the contrast color pop. And second of all, when I do these, I have it on a long needle. I, I, it's magic looped because I don't want any of this to be gathered. I want to have, especially want to be able to see the stitches as they come off to the right. And, and I continually sort of press them over there. So let me show you what that means. So because it's because I have them all stretched out and they're kind of pressed over here. When I go to make this stitch across these five, I'm pulling it so you know there's going to be enough, see? And then when I go back over here, it kind of... Um, eases back. So I'll show you that again. I'm Because here's another one of these floats that's going to go across five stitches. A 
So I'm just making sure all of this is far over and smooth and far over to the right and I make that stitch and then there's no way that it's going to pucker because I have ensured that it, it has enough yarn fed through the back to make that distance when I'm done knitting. But if I had it on a small needle, then that may not be the case. It may be too short of a, maybe too short of a float then. And then I'm constantly going like this and smoothing it out as I knit just to see that my color work is flat. I will, I'm gonna add one more thing about this that just thrills me so much is that I, the last video I made, I said, oh, I don't know what sweater and oh, maybe I'll pull people, find out what people want to knit. And then the next sweater just happened. Why? Because I was open, because I don't have a list that's like weighing me down that I don't have. And so the next sweater that I'm very excited about is um, by Rebecca Klo. And she has a new pattern coming out, which I'll pop a picture of in here. I don't have it with me handy, um, but it is just an incredible design where it is, I think six patterns in one. It's all over cable work as a crew neck sweater, um, a V neck sweater, a cardigan or a vest and all the iterations of that. And so I really want to knit that pick up one of the colors from in here and knit that cardigan to wear when I'm in Scotland. Amy and I will be doing a poetry advent starting in April so I'm excited about that too and you'll be able to join along and then of course like we did last fall we'll we'll definitely record together in Edinburgh um, a poetry video to talk about the poems. And I think I showed this morning, I don't have it here. I might pop that in here too. It just, oh, and look, this is like coming to the end. I'll just hold it up for the last minute and say that my mother, of course, is knitting some or painting something like this now. Which further thrills me. These colors, of course, come from Tilda Swinton, who is such a strong, glorious woman. And she, uh, I have a photo of her, which is actually my, and my iPhone, you know, the picture on the front, it's that, that's what my picture is. And I'll pop it in here. And it's, the, her words are just amazing, what she says about um, her way of moving through the world. So I'll share that with you too. But today I'm going to keep this really short and easy. You know that I want to show you more and I want to do styling videos and uh, show you the, the knits in, in my life. I also want to get this out to you though, um, because I am so excited to share this, all this goodness with you. And I thank you for tuning in and we'll talk next time. Okay.